G is for gambler, relying on luck or insider knowledge to make a quick buck. G's also for gangster, you know what I mean? And combining the two was Arnold Rothstein. I'm Indy Nidell and this is the World Dictionary, today featuring Arnold Rothstein. He inspired characters in a bunch of books and movies like, like The Great Gatsby, Mobsters, Guys and Dolls, and Boardwalk Empire. He was a big symbol of the Roaring Twenties and, in fact, America's fascination with organized crime goes pretty much straight back to Arnold Rothstein, who was known by such colorful names as The Brain, The Fixer, The Big Bankroll, and Mr. Big. If Rothstein was alive today, he would totally have me killed for just now doing that. Anyhow, unlike many of his gangster and gambler associates, Rothstein was not born poor. He grew up in Manhattan, the son of Jewish businessman Abraham Rothstein, who was such an upright guy that Governor Smith called him Abe the Just. I'm actually not making that up. And Arnold's older brother studied to be a rabbi. Arnold himself didn't do a whole lot of studying, though he did show a natural aptitude for math. Rothstein was apparently a difficult child and was extremely jealous of his brother, and already as a child he gambled. In the 1920s he would even say, I always gambled, I can't remember when I didn't. When I gambled, nothing else mattered. By his mid-twenties he had set up a gambling casino in the Tenderloin District, which is now the touristy dead center of Midtown Manhattan, but back then was the worst crime center of the most crime-ridden city in the USA, centering around Broadway. From the 1880s, actually, the stretch of Broadway from 23rd to 34th Street was known as the Great White Way because of all the illuminated ads. This title would later be transferred to Times Square. But I digress. In addition to the casino, he sank money into a horse track in Maryland where he supposedly fixed a lot of the races that he won. Thing is, because of his connections in the banking community through his dad, Rothstein had seriously deep pockets and a network of informers. He paid well for good information and was a millionaire by the age of 30. In fact, you know the whole glamour about syndicate crime, mobsters? Yeah, well, you can thank Arnold Rothstein for that. Leo Katcher wrote of him that he transformed organized crime from a thuggish activity by hoodlums into a big business, run like a corporation with himself at the top. He wasn't just about gambling, he loan sharked as well. And it was Rothstein who was the first person who realized that prohibition could be a gold mine, and he imported and distributed bootleg liquor and owned parts of a bunch of speakeasies. He soon saw that even bigger profits could be made in another vice, one with massive profit margins and basically zero competition back then, the heroin trade. So yes, he was soon the kingpin of the drug trade in the US, though he was surpassed as number one liquor bootlegger by George Remus. Here's how a typical Rothstein scam worked. Rothstein owned a horse called Sporting Blood under the pseudonym Redstone Stables, right? The horse was entered in the 1921 Traverse Stakes, and Rothstein then conspired with a trainer. Another horse, a top horse, was entered on the morning of the race by the trainer, and this drove up the odds on Sporting Blood to 3 to 1. Just before post time, the other horse was scratched without explanation, and Sporting Blood won Rothstein $500,000. He was one of the wealthiest gamblers in US history and is widely considered as the founding father of American organized crime. Guys within his organization actually included Meyer Lansky, Legs Diamond, Lucky Luciano, and Dutch Schultz, and that is a pretty good who's who of New York gangsters. He mediated disputes between local gangs, charging a big fee for his services, of course, but was also a mediator between legitimate businesses, and Tammany Hall had to recognize him as a necessary ally for running the city. Tammany Hall was the political machine that controlled New York politics. One thing that he may or may not have been involved with that I have to mention was the Black Sox scandal, the biggest sporting scandal in American history. Now this was when eight baseball players with the Chicago White Sox, including shoeless Joe Jackson, one of the best hitters of all time, conspired with gamblers to intentionally lose the 1919 World Series to Cincinnati. The Sox had been heavy favorites. When this scandal came to light in September 1920, it rocked the nation. The players indicted were actually acquitted by grand jury, but were banned from baseball for life by Judge Kennesaw Mountain Landis, who was appointed baseball's first commissioner because of the scandal, and who definitely belongs in this series because he was also a complete dick. But was Rothstein involved? It was his agents that paid off the Sox, and he did make a lot of money on the series, but prosecutors could find no evidence linking him to the fix, and the grand jury did not even indict him. He testified that 
Sure, he was asked to be in on it, but he declined and said that Abe Attell, the pivotal figure, used his name to pull it off. Attell, by the way, was, like the players, acquitted by the grand jury. That's not too surprising since all of the records of the grand jury, including the signed confessions of the players, mysteriously disappeared. So, with all the evidence basically gone, the judge asked the players to reconfess on the stand, and they pled the Fifth Amendment, and the judge had no choice other than to dismiss the case. So, officially, not only was Rothstein not involved, officially, the series was never even fixed. Different writers suggest that Rothstein both was and was not involved in the actual fix. I'm inclined to think he was not, though he was aware of it. I think it was too public for him to be hands-on with. He was smarter than that. He was, though, sued in connection with the Fuller case, which you can look up because it's way too complicated to tell here, but he died before anything came of it. Yeah, Rothstein continued making bets and collecting debts, often doing his business on the street surrounded by bodyguards until his tale came to an end when he was killed in 1928. He was shot November 4th and mortally wounded, apparently for refusing to pay a poker debt of hundreds of thousands of dollars that he owed but would not pay since he claimed the game had been rigged. Hump McManus was arrested for the murder but was acquitted for lack of evidence, though being named Hump McManus should be a crime in and of itself. There's a version of the story that Rothstein Rothstein wanted to wait until after Election Day, November 6th, to pay off the debt because he was going to win big on backing Herbert Hoover for president and Franklin Roosevelt for governor. That was actually a pretty smart bet. On his deathbed, he refused to tell the police who shot him, saying, me mother did it, and you stick to your trade, I'll stick to mine. After his death, his empire was split up by all those 20s gangsters you know and love from the movies. Ironically, Tammany Hall was brought down as well since it had relied on Rothstein to control the local street gangs, and soon reformer Fiorello LaGuardia appeared on the scene as mayor and revitalized the city. So how much of a dick was Rothstein? Let's find out. In terms of achievements, well, pretty much everything he did was illegal, so it's not very positive. He was a mediator between businesses, though. He kept the local street gangs of New York in line. Uh, by dying, he indirectly led to the fall of Tammany Hall, so I suppose that sort of counts. As for negative achievements, he was the top bootlegger and top drug lord in the country. He fixed horse races and possibly a World Series. He transformed crime into organized crime syndicates and indeed is often known as the father of organized crime. So that's like a negative two overall. As for being a dick, well, let's see. Fixing races means intentionally cheating people of their money. That's pretty dickish. And knowing what heroin can do, being the top heroin dealer in the nation is pretty dickish too. And let's face it, we all know the sort of stuff that gangsters have to do to survive, and it's dickish by definition. Yeah, let's remember that being a top gangster is not glamorous. It means being a major and brutal criminal. Rothstein scores over two on the combined scale, making him a first-class dick. And though you may have heard more about guys like Lucky Luciano and Dutch Schultz, remember that Rothstein was the first. And like that, he's gone. Underground. Nobody's ever seen him since. He becomes a myth. But hey, at least we got all those great movies. <laughs> That's it for today. If you know of any dicks throughout history that we should talk about, let us know who they are in the comments and tell us why. And remember, living people do not count. And please, support us on Patreon so I can continue to take the time to write and film this crap. There's a link below. Don't forget to subscribe to never miss a single letter of the alphabet. And hey, don't be a dick.